Well, hello everybody. I've got a very special video here this morning. It's the day after Thanksgiving, early Friday morning. I had a fantastic Thanksgiving, and I hope everyone else did too. Had the chance to get out and do a little pheasant hunting, even though I didn't get any birds. But more importantly, I had a great time with family yesterday. And to top it all off, as we were eating our Thanksgiving dinner, my aunt said, well, Tom, I've got something to give you. And she handed me this. This old case knife. Now, we often hear of, you know, these slip joint knives being referred to as grandpa's knives. Well, folks, this quite literally is my grandfather's knife. It's my mother's father. And, um... The sisters all, I guess, all talked and said, well, Tom collects knives, so we think Tom should have this knife. So this is my grandfather's knife. It's a case knife, a stockman, well used. Yeah, just a wonderful knife. And I was just flabbergasted. I'm, I'm still kind of speechless. This this means so much to be able to have this knife what a beautiful knife now the tang stamp uh, indicates it was probably made anywhere from 1940 to the mid 60s so you know this knife is 60 to 80 years old but to have grandpa's knife just oh I can't tell you what what this means to me it's fantastic something else of my grandfather's that I have this uh, hung in my grandma and grandpa's kitchen, just inside the entryway. It was in a big oval wooden frame. I guess it's like an old, well, it's a uh, J.E. Curhan, I guess is the artist of this. Probably a magazine cover. <laughs> but you got the old man sitting there, his double barrel shotgun, sleeping away, pipe upside down in his mouth. His faithful dog laying there, snoozing away. A couple of donuts, slice of bread laying there. And there you got the old rooster <laughs> just looking on like, what's going on here? And I just always loved this picture, and I was able to get this too. So another uh, childhood memory. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to clean this knife. And I'm looking forward to doing this. Oh, I want to... Mention also, my aunt gave me this little knife also. This is a tiny little knife. Look at how tiny that is. And it was in with her mom and dad's things, so she doesn't know if this was grandma's little knife or if this was grandpa's little knife. But yeah, a second little, look at this tiny little jackknife. <laughs> yes. There was a lot of these made, and a, a lot of people back then carried these little knives. And I, I told my aunt, you know, back in the day, a lot of packages were tied with string. We didn't have all the tape and, and that. So you always wanted to have a little, a little knife, just even a little tiny blade like this to cut the string off the package, or if you were tying up a package to be able to cut the string and, and things like that. So... Yeah, just a cute little knife here. Anyway, we're going to get to it here. We're going to clean this. Now, I did ahead of time clean that tang stamp off. And just so you can have a nice shot of the tang stamp. This one has case in the block letters with the two X's underneath. Of course, there's the nice shield or inlay right there. Then it does have the pattern number here on the back. I can get it to focus. It's not focusing in real well. But anyway, we're going to clean. So have fun watching and let's see what this is going to look like when I get done.
All right, just with a little bit with that cleaning compound, we can see she's cleaning up already. She's looking good already. So I will continue on with the other blades. As you can see, they're cleaning up pretty nice. Amazing what a little rubbing compound will do. And there you see this one, just after one little pass here. I got some more work to do here. I will do it off camera, but you get the basic idea of what I'm doing with the blades. And I'm just going to keep working on them, try to get the rest of that stuff off. Well, I spent about another 10 minutes or so going over it with the rubbing compound. And as you can see, the blades are basically clean now. We'll take a look at them. There's the spay blade. And one challenge is always, you know, getting down in here in the tang area. But we'll uh, use a wire brush here in just a second and try to touch them up just a little bit. There's your sheep's foot. Looking a lot better already. And I do have to say, there's some gunk down in here. The Walk and talk is not real good, but the uh, back springs are coming up real well. So after we clean those and we do some oiling and that, I think I'll get the snap back to it. But there's the main clip point blade. So let's try to clean these tangs out just a little bit. So with the wire brush, I was able to clean those tangs off quite a bit. Got rid of all the rust and gunk that was on this one. So when we go to oil it and this and that, it should uh, help it out quite a bit, getting rid of all that gunk. So, yep, we're looking pretty good so far here. It's coming right along.
Okay, so I got the channels cleaned out a little bit. There's a lot of dirt and pocket pocket lint and such down in there. So I got rid of it, most of it. Um, I added just a little bit of oil. And look at this. Oh yeah, nice walk and talk again. I figured it would come back. I figured it would come back. And the more I work them, the better I know the walk and talk will come back. Oh yeah, it's got snap now. Very good. All right, next step is I'm going to get it polished up. Okay, so this is what we uh, ended up with, with our first initial polishing. Um, on the first one, I didn't even wait for the paste to dry. Well, look at, look at that shine we're getting back already. This is looking so much better. Look at that. It's restoring beautifully. Look at the back springs here. They're looking really good. Not bad for a 60 to 80 year old knife, huh? That was well used. That might uh, speak to the testament of uh, the quality of case knives, too. So I know he used this hard. He was a farmer. Yep. Shining right up. So what I'm going to do off camera is I'm going to Apply at least one more, if not two more, uh, coats of uh, this case paste on it to shine it up. But I'm going to let it dry in between because it polishes up better than if you let it dry first. Just on that first initial one, I wanted to kind of just remove as much as I could. So from here on out, I'm going to give it at least one, maybe two more go-arounds with the case paste. Well, I don't know what you think, but I think it's come out really good. I gave it one more polish job here, and look at this. I'm really happy with this. This knife cleaned up very nicely. Look at the back springs there. Yes, the bolsters are in good shape. There's no deep scratches in them or anything. They cleaned right up. The shield still looks great. Oh, I am so happy. Just love the way this cleaned up. Now, I do know that down in the channels yet, there's still some gunk down in there. So, you know what's coming next. If I can see through the camera here, get this other blade. <laughs> it's kind of hard sometimes looking through the camera and looking these blades out. 
You can see where it's dirty there. Some of that dirty oil running out still. There's still gunk down in there. So we're going to give it the famous mineral oil bath. That has become a staple here on this channel. Um, I'm not going to let it soak overnight or anything. I'm probably going to just let it soak for a couple hours. And every so often come down and pull it out. And uh, just work the blades a little bit back and forth. And put it back down in there and let it soak some more. So let's see what happens here in just a couple hours as we put it in the famous mineral oil. Okay, see you in a bit. Let's take a look at the finished product. Look at this. I soaked this for, I don't know, an hour or an hour and a half. I did come down and, and manipulate the blades back and forth. But just look at the sheen on these covers. And I'm not sure yet if these are bone or if they're synthetic jigged. I'm going to look at them a little closer. I think they're synthetic. But just look at the, the sheen on this. The magic of mineral oil. Let me get it focused up in there better. This knife came out wonderful. Yep. And so, open the blade here, and you're going to see there's still some dark oil coming out of there. And we will have to keep wiping that out and wiping it out. One thing I did do after I got most of the gunk, or most of the oil out of it, I did blow out the, the pivots with a little canned air there. You can see here from the soaking job, you can see all the dark stuff floating on top you can see all that gunk that came out and I wiped off these back springs but as you can see there's more gunk on there so this is a process you can see all the gunk that I got wiped out earlier and it's a process you just want to keep going over it work the blades and clean it out and eventually you'll get rid of all that gunk. I could always soak it again for for a while. But you just keep doing that over and over and over. And eventually all that dirty oil will come out. But I'm very happy with how this knife came out. Compared to what it looked like when I started. Nice and shiny. As you can see more gunk there. So it's just a process here, over and over. Maybe there's a little bit more here on this back spring. Oh yeah, see there? So we're just going to have to keep doing this over and over and over. But, for the purposes of this video, I think this knife cleaned up just wonderfully. Oh... Grandpa, look at your knife now. Yes. Yes. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, I've sure enjoyed uh, restoring this knife. Uh, thinking of Grandpa as I did it. And uh, yeah. What a wonderful gift. I will cherish this forever. So until next time, everyone have a very delightful day.